And it's like, man, you know. And it's like, that's not the glory job. That's like, you know, and when you see the commercials for it now, they're like, they make it, oh, you get the, well, look, look, you see, you get to draw the line and this and that. And it's like, man, you know, it's, they, they can kind of lie to you. By the way, if you join the military, realize they can kind of lie to you about the job you want. Don't take a job at face value. If you want to know about a job, you make sure you know what job you're getting. If you, like, if you absolutely want to make sure you, like, you say, you know, I want to go talk to a guy that actually does this. Don't, don't tell me a guy that knows about it. I actually want to talk to a guy that does this. That's, you know, and you know, a recruiter will do that, too. Because if they know, if they know, if a recruiter knows that it will land him uh, a recruit, he'll do it. You know, so that's the thing. Try to milk a recruiter for as much money as you can. <laughs> you know, when you see the big money, you better say, "I want that big money." You know, just let them know. You know, if Uncle Sam's signing the bill and, and literally signing the bill saying, "I want you to be a bullet mattress for me for this amount of time," you darn right, I'm going to milk you for all the money I can. You know, but it's because you know, I care. Um, you know, so like, yeah, be you know, it, don't all you know. Also, don't go into the military thinking that um, you're just doing it to get a paycheck. Because yeah, you, you should get a paycheck, but also it's like you got to have some heart, you know, because that's what's going to carry you through. If you feel like you know, yeah, what I'm doing, this is a good thing. This is serving a country. You know, this is a good honorable job. You know, that's the thing to realize. I, I may you know uh, ditch on military this and that, but it's like it's an honorable job, and that's the thing that was really hard to deal with. Was that you know how do you deal with scumbag people who do an honorable job? You know that's the hard that's one hard aspect to deal with is that you got some scumbags in there you know and it's like you know it just, ugh, you know it's like it's an honorable job you're in it's like oh, how do you how do, you know how do you wash your hands of this person or how do how do you make this person look dirty when they're like ugh. but anyways um, <laughs> military is it, military is interesting because it also gives you a different lifestyle to view. So, and we definitely, you definitely give you the ideas of the negative lifestyles. So, there's a lot of divorces in the military. You know, go, if you're going to the military, go on single, because there's always women somewhere. And, in my opinion, it's a lot easier when you're traveling alone. Because if there's a, yeah, the more you do, the more you got to bounce around, the, mo the more difficult it can be, in my opinion. So, <clears throat> and, but then again, it's also a test to show you, like, well, what exactly is your relationship based on? You know, so that's the other, that's the flip side. If you can get married beforehand and stay married well then, that shows you, you the two of you truly love each other. So do th think about that. If you want, a, you know, a good reason to get a divorce, join the military. You know, and if you can't handle, handle it together, guess what? You, you will separate. If you couldn't separate before, even though the relationship was bad, yeah. So this would not appeal to, like, what, how many ever of you, but, you know, I want to throw ideas out to everybody. My fellow people by. Uh, no, I'm not trying to let this go to my head. Nor do I want this to go to my head. Just, why not be creative? Why not help people who do whatever? There's some people who subscribe. And, you know, if you're going to look at something, or you're going to have something playing, something, you know, why not something that inspires you? Something that makes you think, hey, why, you know, yeah, I could do that. That's something that's cool. Something, you know, I could do. Um, something else I've been thinking about was that... Uh, I like jogging, and part of the thing I like about jogging is that I, as I jog, I am conquering the earth. I am, you know, I am trekking over the you know the world. I am like pounding away with my feet into the soil, into the hard pavement, into the sand, into the dirt, into the grass, into whatever you know. And I, I am moving. I am you know propelling myself through time and space. I am you know I am control control total control of my body at that moment. This is also why I like swimming, by the way. Um, but I am, you know, I am moving under my own power, and I'm moving at ex you know, extreme rate. I'm, you know, accelerating at times, you know. And it's just, and I like, I like doing that with the dog, too. It's it's a lot of fun to, do to jog with the dog. It's also kind of annoying because the dog will, like, dart here and there or freak out some things and start to pull on you, and then, it's like, poops at the wrong time. Like, dang, dog. But, uh, no, we always walk at one spot, you know, but anyways. Um, uh, it, there's something very nice about jogging. I recommend it for everybody out there. You know, even, and even if you don't think you need to jog, if you're thin, go for it. Give it a try. You might get, and you never know, because you might get an adrenaline rush or, or an endorphin rush when you, uh, when you jog. 
Because, yeah, it's just like, you know, you're, you kind of, they get a uh, runner's high, they call it. And you got to get it to a certain point, you know, when you can finally get that. Either that or, or I'm just like, <laughs> it's, you know, I must have just kind of blanked out, you know, when I ran. But, yeah, sometimes I was just kind of like, kind of like a runner's high, but I just kind of, you know, yeah, I'm not really feeling it anymore. I'm just still going. And singing, you know, singing the cadences while do it, while uh, jogging. Especially in formation was, uh, it worked for me. It helped me, that helped me out. So, yeah, when you get a good cadence collar, that really does help out. It really does work. Because you're not, and cause remember, when you're in a jog, in a formation, you're keeping a steady pace. Uh, and that's an interesting aspect, too, is that you can get into these paces where they, they start speeding up, and you're like, oh, oh God, oh, God, i got to keep up. And you're like, and your body's just like, ah, you know, it's just, uh, but the long little shuffle step jogs were in, oh, God, it's annoying. And then there's a great Aloha run, which is like, God, those, I, I'm glad I ran that free. I did it like an hour and 22 minutes. So I jogged for over an hour and, and 20 minutes. Um which is this, to jog that long. To jog longer than a movie. Realize that, I've jogged longer than a movie, so, ooh. oh goodness. But there's some, there's a sense of accomplishment in that, you know, because like, well, I've covered this distance, you know. And, and also because I am of the opinion that the human body is designed to run. We evolved to the point where we're runners. You know, it's little scavengers scurrying across the, the open tundra, you know, or the open uh, savanna, you know, of uh, Africa. And, you know, that's, that's what we did. That's what we got into. So I'm like, yeah. Um, also, you also dig uh, evolution shows, you know. Especially the one that got coming out now. And uh, even there's a new show called Dog Fights, which uh, I find <clears throat> fan great. It's great, fascinating stuff. So you're like totally, you see it. You see the battle, you know, in real time. You know, not, not the stock footage that they always show. So good for you guys. I don't think that there, and I don't think you're you're misusing history or you're misrepresenting history when you when you reveal it or when you portray it in a certain way. I I think you know this is you know I was getting at it earlier about history. Um, go into museums, go into art museums, go into um, history museums. You know, check those things out because it is neat. You know, because especially because like try to look at it and try to consider. Well, what was this for? Well, what what was the purpose of this, or what what is this idea? You know, what I mean, what is it trying to say to me, in a case of art, even you know, or what? Why did this person consider this important? What does this mean? You know, and and yeah, just kind of try to apply that, try to think of that, you know, as something to do. Um, you know, and it's all about and it's about traveling too, you know, because you're exposing yourself to a different world, different environment, you know, and you can experience that. It's like, oh, okay, so. Of course, the thing is, we need, <laughs> there needs to be, more that needs to take place, in my opinion, and the way to get that is more people need to do that, but it's also more people need to have better wages. So, the United States needs to look at its infrastructure, in my opinion, and, um, you know, you got to, I'm trying to look out for the infrastructure in my local valley right now, <clears throat> and that, you know, look, Let's, let's try to make a form of mass transit that people can use because, you know, and, and it would be, you know, people would really use it. It would also cut down on the amount of uh, smog pollution here in the valley. You know, there's all the people, all these people have health problems. And all I'm suggesting is a, a trolley that runs from uh, Mexicali north uh, through Heber, El Centro, Imperial, Brawling. Calipat, and then, like, maybe, if it's possible, loop through Nylon and Westmoreland. You know, and, uh, and then, you know, just have the bus services run off of that line. So, like, you know, really, they're just doing kind of little loops, but uh, the trolley would run north and south, and the bus services would run east and west. And I think that'd be perfect. And it would really cut down on a lot of pollution. And a lot more people, a lot more people would use it. They would feel less need to use the cars. You know, so you know, because we already got a lot of dust where we live. There's a lot of dust, a lot of uh, pollen, and other like just plant and chemical. That's another thing. We got chemical debris in the air, and then you add smog, which just which makes the air heavy, and then keeps in all these pollutants. 